There's no question that fried food is delicious, but it can make a huge mess and stink up your house for days to come. And there has to be a better way to deep fry, and that's on your gas grill. You could use the side burner or a completely separate stove, but that's just extra stuff that you don't even need, and it gives up one of the biggest benefits of deep frying on your gas grill. All you need is a gas grill with at least two burners, so that way we can set it up for indirect cooking, and a pot or a Dutch oven to hold the oil. I'm using a cast iron pan with really tall sides, which makes it easier to hold in the oil than a regular frying pan. A Dutch oven would work really well too, just don't use the ones with the legs. If you do, it may not sit flat on your grill and you don't want to spill it. One of the secrets to deep frying on your gas grill is how you light it. We're going to do indirect, so on the one side of the grill we're going to turn the burners on, and the other side we're going to leave them off. You'll see why we do that a little later in the video. Put your cast iron pan on the side directly over the burners to begin preheating it. Vegetable oil or peanut oil are both great choices for frying, so fill it up about halfway with your favorite frying oil. That gives enough headroom that you can add the food without having it bubble over. In gas grills, they're designed to work with the lid shut, so you probably need to close the lid to hit the temperatures you want. And a quick note on safety, you'll notice that my gas grill is way away from the house, it's not on my deck, and so if it were to catch fire, it wouldn't catch anything else. It probably won't, but it's always better to be safe than sorry. I'm making one of the stinkiest foods to cook, and that is Cajun fried catfish with some store-bought cornmeal breading. The whole breading setup is outside for really easy cleanup. I wasn't thinking when I started I should have removed the skin off that catfish. My mind was on kicking up the flavor, and I spiced it up a bit by using Louisiana hot sauce as a binder, and then I coated both sides with the breading. I set the finished pieces on a cooling rack to keep them from getting soggy while they waited for their bubble bath to preheat. As the oil's heating up, don't trust the dome thermometer because it's not going to tell you what temperature the oil is. Instead, you need a good instant read thermometer, and that'll give you much more accurate results. I'm also going to shoot for 25 degrees over my target temp, and that way when I put the cold food in, it'll drop down to be in the perfect temperature zone for cooking. Put your food on one piece at a time with plenty of room to spare, and that keeps the fish in this case from sticking to itself and its neighbors, and keeps the oil temperature from dropping so much that you end up with a soggy instead of a crispy final product. You do that by watching the oil temperature and adjusting as needed. You're probably going to want to shut the lid and can even fire up another burner if you need it, just as long as you keep at least one of the burners off. With most fried food, it's a good idea to flip it halfway through in case it floats and doesn't cook on one side, and watch the color to make sure that it doesn't burn. In the Gut Buster video, I pan fried it and it was done on the outside but raw on the inside. So I ended up putting it on the gas grill to bake it and cook it through. And here is the genius of frying on your gas grill. When the food is done frying, you can put it on a wire rack on the cold side of the grill to drip dry. If you don't have room, you could always put it on the top warmer rack instead. This has two benefits. Number one, it helps keep things warm from the first batch to the last. And two, you can leave the lid shut to finish cooking the food without burning it, which is a huge advantage if you're frying something thicker, like fried chicken. Now I've got a hot batch of crispy fried fish that's all ready at the same time. Cleanup really couldn't be easier and beats having to wipe down everything in your kitchen if you've made a huge mess. You carefully put the pot on the side burner to cool, and then shake off any oil on the cooling rack. Turn all of the burners on to low, and don't go full blast because there's a bunch of oil on the cool side and it'll light up if you go straight to high. The best part about this method is it's Mrs. GTE approved, we have a clean house, and we got some fried fish. So if you made it to this far in the video, you might as well hit subscribe, and if you want to learn more about how to use your gas grill, check out this playlist. I show you how to make burgers, pizza, and a whole bunch of other things. We'll catch you next time.